What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not even spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Who dare accuse us from whom God has chosen for his own? No one, for God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one, for Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in a place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. God is for us and this changes everything. We are excited to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. Let's give God a wonderful worship and praise right now, Lord God. We thank you. Lord, this is not by accident that we are here, Father. You literally called us to be here this morning. So we thank you for that, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Get to his presence right now, church.
among us. Let the glory of the Lord. Jesus' name, amen? Amen, church. Come on, we need to wake up and give God a wonderful praise and worship. Amen, church?
for us. God is on our side. He has overcome. Yes, He has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. Carrying our burdens. Covering our shame. He has overcome. Yes, He has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. I will live. I will not die. The resurrection power of Christ alive in me. And I am free in Jesus' name.
That was for me. I appreciate y'all giving me some claps and, and praise, but let's give God some praise. You got to turn me up, David. The en- yeah, the enemy's been trying to attack my voice. I'm going to need a little help this morning. Maybe you didn't understand the question. Maybe you didn't understand the directive. But I need you to give God praise. Like you're glad you're alive today. Amen. Give God praise like you know he's already answered your prayers. Praise God like you know he deserves it. Give him worship like you know he's worthy of it. Praise him as if this was your last day on planet earth. Hallelujah. If you know you only had 10 minutes left, how would you praise him? How would you worship him? How would you glorify him? If you know you only had 10 minutes left on planet Earth, in the next 10 minutes, you're going to be in glory. How would you? Y'all don't want to help me today. How would you worship him? He's worthy of your praises. He's worthy of the fruit of your lips. He's worthy of your hands going in the air. He's worthy of your voice today. He deserves the glory. Hallelujah! There's an anointing in this place. I need you to dial into the spirit realm. Whatever's on your mind, whatever you brought in here, let it go. Drop it. Whoever you're mad with, let them go. Whoever hurt you, let them go. Drop it. Surrender it. Give it to Jesus. Hallelujah! Right now, there's nothing more important than your praise. The enemy can take anything from you, but don't let him steal your praise. Amen. You see, I can be broke and praising. Or I can have a whole lot of money and don't know him. Come on, somebody. I think it was Bob Marley that once said, I feel sorry for rich people. Because all they have is money. But when you have the richness of the glory of God, when you know that you don't deserve to even be in his presence, 
my Bible says that while we were enemies of God, he died for us. Mm. He loved you when you didn't like him. He was willing to die so you and I could live. I don't know about you, but that's worthy of my praise. That's worthy of the fruit of my lips. Hallelujah. Amen. I didn't come to church to be entertained. I came to bring glory. I came to give God glory. When the praises go up, God's glory comes down. Give my hand to praise. Amen. You guys can be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So many things are happening at this moment. I'm sure there are a lot of questions. I don't have a whole lot of answers. I might not even feel like answering them. Ask God about it. Amen. Amen. I want to thank God for our praise team. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for our praise team. I want to thank God for Brother Wendy Pierre, amen, for being willing to come and assist us. And I also want to thank God for Brother Javon. That brother dangerous on the drums, man. I was, but y'all turned him loose for a minute. I thought we had to replace the drums. You know, it's been over two years since this team been up here on the platform. I know some of y'all been praying and asking, when we getting them back? When the praise team coming back? But you know me, I got to move in God's timing. I can't move when man say, Pastor, I think we got to, no, 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 no. What is God saying? I appreciate your thinking. But what is God? I got to move in God's timing. See, when I move in God's timing, I get God's blessing. When I move in man's timing, I get man's blessings. And sometimes man's blessings becomes man's stressings. Amen? I'm just messing with you today. Let me just give you a clue this morning. Um, I am so excited in the Lord. My wife and I just come off of an emergency vacation. You say, what is an emergency vacation? Is that who I think it is? Yes. Amen. God bless you, sister, for being here. Andrea Beverly, God bless you. Thank you for being here. Amen. And that Jamila? <laughs> no, I see Jamila. <laughs> Amen. Good to see you and your mama, the twins, and the mama's mama. God bless you. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Lazelle, Nicole, good to see you guys in the house. Amen. You still look good. Amen. Come on. Let's give it up for our family, man. It's okay. Amen. I'm looking around the room. If I missed anybody, it's all good. Uh, there are folks that are watching us right now uh, online on our live stream channels, our Facebook channel, as well as our um, YouTube channel. We thank God for that audience as well. And thank God for those of you that are here present in the house. And we want to thank God for our uh, children's workers in the back. And we want to continue to pray that God continue to use them as they uh, continue to volunteer and be a blessing to your children. They're not just bare babysitting. Your kids are getting the word of God. Even in the nursery, they're getting the word of God. There's a curriculum for that. Amen. We want to continue to pray for our Spanish ministry, uh, Nuevo Comienzo. In the back, God's doing some great things uh, with them, uh, and their church is rapidly growing back there. So we thank God for that uh, opportunity that he's afforded us and um, just being a blessing. That's when you know you're blessed, that you can be a blessing. Amen? Yeah. As I was saying, uh, Felicia and I just come back from an emergency vacation, much-needed vacation. Actually, it wasn't scheduled or planned um, we were supposed to be at a conference this week, and the conference was canceled. And we have a conference next week that we're going to be at. So uh, we've been running. We've been running pretty hard for the last 45 days or so. And it's all good. That's what we do. And, um, um, and so we decided, you know what, let's take that time that we would have used at the conference. Let's get away. Let's go. <laughs> Man, we, we made some reservations. And some of you saw the pictures on Facebook. I'm not that guy. I'm not trying to put it out there so everybody can see how great we're doing. But a lot of people like to see that stuff. They want to know that your pastors are taking some time off and that they're resting and that they're really trying to take it. It's, it's important. Amen. Because I know that we have other people here who can 
preach. And so uh, if even far better than I can. Thank God for that. <clears throat> so you're probably wondering, what happened to my voice? Well, I left it on vacation. Amen. So don't get stuck on that. Just listen. Don't listen to my voice. Listen to the word of God that's kind of come through. And while on vacation, I didn't prepare no sermon or study. I wasn't even thinking about that. I wasn't. I was not. Look at me. I was not thinking about that. I was enjoying my wife and having a great time with her. But the psalmist says in Psalm 111, I think it's verse 16, thy word have I hid in my heart, amen, that I might not sin against thee. So I'm confident in the word that God will give us today. Uh, and I don't say that as a precursor. <laughs> I just want to share that with you because I believe God's going to take us somewhere today. And uh, I'm excited. I'm on a journey with you in this. But before I go there, I want to echo again the amazing time that we had last Sunday uh, for Mother's Day. Ladies, you guys rocked it out. Amen. Let's give it up for our ladies. Every one of our speakers were just amazing, uh, from the video testimonies to those who got up and shared. And um, first lady, I just have a little bias, forgive me, but uh, man, you did an amazing job on uh, Sunday as well. So I want to thank you for your leadership, for your dedication and commitment, not just to this church and the kingdom of God, but to me. You keep me sane. You keep me balanced. Amen. You keep me in the fight, and I thank God for you today. Amen. Let's give it up for my, our first lady, Felicia Davis. Amen. Amazing, amazing woman of God. I'm so grateful God honored me. Also, uh, while we were on vacation, you know, and I, I'm sharing this for a reason because it's part of my message. I want you to get something from this. Uh, I'm not giving the devil any glory. I'm just sharing with you my story. Can y'all work with me? While on vacation, I got sick. I got a cold. How do you get a cold? I'm like, Lord, this was my one shot <laughs> for a long time. And somehow, I ended up, yeah, Yolanda, I got a cold. <laughs> and I'm like, really? I said, you know what, Lord? I'm going to change my attitude about what's happening. I'd rather have a cold on the beach and have a cold sitting up in somebody's hospital. I don't have COVID. I have a cold. Don't get it twisted. Amen? God healed me of that. I've had that. <clears throat> and um, I'm like, how do you get a cold? <laughs> but you know what? We went to the beach anyway. I got some vitamin D. Amen. And, uh, and some vitamin F. <laughs> Somebody will get that in a minute. I used to be slow, too. Vitamin Felicia. And so, um, uh, and so, man, we rested, had a great time. And I'm like, you know what, we'll deal with this. This ain't going to stop me, man. We ate well and enjoyed ourselves, maximized our time, maximized our rest. My wife was like, even if you don't want to do a whole lot of things, I'm right here with you. You know, if we just sat right on the, at, the, at the poolside, I'm right here. You know, we don't have to get on the jet skis. We don't have to do parasailing. I'm right here. Amen. That was just as good for me, knowing she was right there. And so, um, you know, I started, you know, dealing with that. And then I get a, uh, we already were aware that there was a death in the family. We had a death in the family, on Felicia's side of the family, but still the family. And uh, her cousin had passed away. And um, the family was asking if, you know, they could use Living Faith as uh, uh, a place uh, for the homegoing service. And uh, we were like, yes, we opened that door. And, um, and the brother of the decedent is here today, Brother John, right? Danny. Danny, okay. I didn't want to call you by your street name. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Danny. We continue to pray for you and your family. Amen. And the home going of your brother. Amen. Absolutely. And thank you for being here. And so we had an amazing service yesterday. So my wife and I came from vacation. Thank God we live in Florida. But there are places you can go in Florida and save a lot of money. See, I didn't have to be in Dubai. I've been there. I didn't have to be in Ocho Rios. I've been there. I went to Sand Key in Clearwater, and we had a great time. Come on, somebody, at half the cost. And we had an amazing time right there. 
And so we knew about the, the funeral, so we, hey, we drive over and we served. We served. We honored the family. You guys that assisted us from the church, you helped us to honor our family uh, in that time. And we're humbly grateful for that. And so it wasn't, a, it wasn't an interruption, amen, just a disruption. There's a difference. You've heard me share this before. An interruption is when something happens and it's kind of like a speed bump. It interrupted the, the trajectory of your direction. You have an interruption, a speed bump, but you keep going. A disruption is when something happens and it forces you to change direction. You got to make a change. You got to do something differently. You don't just keep going. Amen? Thank God for disruptions in our lives. And so that happened. And while we were home, getting ready to head back to vacation uh, after the funeral, um, the family didn't even know, but we didn't want to burden y'all with that. I get a call, you know, with daddy back in the hospital, my dad, and things don't look real well. Okay. No problem. Oh, yeah, by the way, you need to call your other family member. Um, they're request, requesting help, you know, for a crisis, uh, crisis situation. And, oh, yeah, while you're dealing with that, you know, one of your sister's cancer started to reflare up again. And the other sister, her knee is, all four of these situations came at one time on our way back. And I was like, you know what, Lord? Thank you, because it's a matter of perspective. It's a matter of how you see it. Amen? Do you see it in the natural, or do you see it in the supernatural? If nothing more, God began to speak to my heart, speak to my wife's heart, and she said, you know what? We need to pray. Let's pray. You would think, well, you're a pastor by default. That's what you're going to do, right? <clears throat> this wasn't just a prayer. We didn't just pray. We pleaded with God. We took time in our living room to say, Lord, right now, that'll be there. Whatever we need is going to happen. You will make up the time the canker worm has, has stolen or whatever the enemy has tried to do. God, I thank you that right now we have the anointing, we have the authority, and Lord God, we stand on your word and we pray in Jesus' name. I didn't worry. I wasn't concerned. I get a call from my dad. Hey, I'm doing good. I just wanted to see how you're doing. Hey, dad, I'm at a funeral right now. I'm going to call you back. Amen. I know my sister is healed. My other sister is healed. God healed her before, remember? She had stage four cancer. She's in her 30s with three kids. And then we prayed for her. And then she came back about a week or two later. They didn't know what stage to put it. So we just going to be safe and say it's a stage one. God, if he did it before, he can do it again. That's the God we serve. <clears throat> Amen. Stop looking at yesterday's miracles and allow yourself to receive today's miracles. God has something for you today. God has a new miracle. <laughs> Somebody going to get this. God has a new miracle for you today. God wants to do something in your life that he's never done before today. Will you believe him for it? Amen. I say that to say this, and that is the Lord, those, those disruptions happened. They were, they were challenges, but God gave me a different mindset, a different perspective. And I'm like, okay, Lord, what do you want to say today? I want you to challenge the perspectives of the people and begin to see things differently. Let me just start with this. I remember growing up right here in Tampa, and there was a... Uh, little place where we would swim. It, it, was called, it was in Sulphur Springs. Some of you might know that place. A little water hole over there. It was like a swimming park over by the dog track. Others may know that place. Amen. Amen. <laughs> um, so we would go there as kids and, you know, we would swim. But as a child, I wasn't a good swimmer. In fact, I couldn't swim at all. And uh, that reminds you of somebody else. He used to stand up here. I couldn't swim either. And, um, and so I would go, because I didn't want to be left back, so I would go 
to be with my family, my brothers, all the friends in the neighborhood, and kind of watch them swim. And you know how you try to fake swimming? You know what I'm saying? I'm in the water, but I'm not going to do all that. They had this little pier out in the middle. It was deep. You had to really know how to swim and get out to the pier. So the good swimmers who could swim would swim out to this little pier thing, and they would get on the pier. they stand there like champions. I'm like, man, I'll never make it to that pier because I'm holding on too tight to this rail. You know, I'm one of them saints that's going to hold tight to the edge. Come on, somebody. You're going to get this in a minute because fear, fear, fear. And so I decided one day I'm going to, uh, in fact, a little friend talked me into it. There was another area at this uh, water playground or whatever it was. Uh, they had a slide. You can slide down this rapid water slide, but yet that slide would take you out into that area that leads you out to the pier. And it was deep. <clears throat> when I say deep, anything more than two feet is deep. But this was about nine to 12 feet deep. So I'm, I'm, I, I decided I'm going to try this. But my friend said, if you try it, if you try it, what I'm going to do as you come down the slide, I'm holding on to the, uh, the, the little ladder. The step. Y'all still with me? The step ladder that gets you out. I'm holding on to the ladder. As you come down the slide, I got you. <laughs> Amen? We need some people in our lives that got us. The question is, what are they holding on to? Come on, somebody. And so I'm coming down. I got faith. I got confidence in my friend because he said, I got you. I'm coming down. That slide was faster than I thought it was. It had to be 90 miles per hour. I don't know if somebody turned the speed up on that thing or what. I come down the slide. Before I could even hold my breath or think, I, was, I went under. I'm back up. I'm like, oh, God, water getting in my mouth. I go under. I'm panicking right now. I go, I'm underwater. I can see that I pop up because the way the turbulence was, it'll force you back up. And I'm trying to catch my breath, my eyes wide open. Then something force you back down. I forget to close my mouth, the water getting in my mouth, and I'm just panicking. It's like nobody saw me drowning. <laughs> you ever felt like that? Nobody see me drowning. I'm panicking. Hands everywhere. And my friend, because I'm thinking to myself, if I drown, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> sure enough, I'm coming around that area. He saw it. He saw me drowning. He saw me panicking. Nobody else saw me. He saw me panicking. He was holding on to something that was firm. Because he was holding on to something that was firm, it gave him the ability and the stability to hold on to me. As I came down, that young boy reached out and grabbed me. For the life of me, I thought I was going to pull him in the water. Me, him, in the ladder was going to be in that water on our way down to the, the little pod. Sure enough, he grabbed me, pulled me out of that water before I literally lost my life. I was rescued. Because somebody was holding on to something that was firm. Come on, somebody. What are you holding on to today? What are you holding on to today? What have you cast your faith into today? What are you believing in so much today? What have you invested in so much today? Perhaps that's greater than God. Because the only thing in this life, the only thing in this world that gives us any assurance and certainty, and that is the blood of Jesus. Jesus. Tony Evans once said, Jesus is not all I need. Jesus is all I have. Amen. You ever been there? Jesus is all I have. Amen. And so I begin to think about that. And I was thinking about some of the circumstances that happens around us on a daily, uh, daily basis. And there's some things that really uh, angers us. It should. 
things that make you angry. We call it a righteous indignation. We try to spiritualize being mad about something. And it's okay. There really is a such thing as a righteous indignation. But what makes you angry in a right way? To the point where you want to do something about it. You ever been so angry you felt like fighting? I'm going to let y'all think about that for a minute. You ever been so angry you felt like fighting? How many fighters we have in the house today? Amen. I see those hands. Maybe I should frame the question differently. Right. What, what are we fighting, right? Amen. Fighters. You grew up fighting. You grew up, you, you, you didn't mind fighting. Somebody wanted to fight, you were glad to do it. You meet them there. Hey, Amen. I see that. Hey, oh, yeah. <laughs> somebody pointing at somebody else. Like, That's me, though. No, hey, you want to bring it? And uh, you didn't mind fighting, fighting, you, you, because you felt like there was something in you to fight for. And you didn't, you didn't care who it was or what it was. And so sometimes life brings us these situations whereby, let me submit to you today, that we need to fight. I know it's a strong word, it's a harsh word, you think about fighting. But from a spiritual perspective, we need to learn how to fight. We need to get angry about some things that's not right. Some injustices that's not right. And I don't mean that in any political context. I'm talking about spiritual. Remember, you heard me say it before. My focus is not about left or right anymore. My focus in this season is about up or down. Amen? You can get stuck out there if you want to. Two wings of the same bird and play that game. But I'm trying to see how many people I can pull out of the flames of hell and populate them into the kingdom of God. That's where the church is. That's where the church needs to be. Let me qualify that. The church of Jesus Christ needs to be today. Kingdom focused. Amen? And so, let me draw your attention to our text today. Turn with me quickly to um, 2 Corinthians, David. 2 Corinthians in the NIV, chapter 10. Very familiar passage of scripture, as is every passage of scripture that you familiarize yourself with. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm going to read verses 1 through 6 just to set this up, give some context to this pericope. The Apostle Paul was often being dissed about his apostleship, especially in this place called Corinth, in this region here in Asia Minor. Paul was often being dissed and challenged. You know, they talk about Paul and, uh, like, you know, he's a fake apostle. He's not a real apostle. You know, Paul talked bad when he's not around us. But when he gets in our presence, he kind of humbles himself. He, you know, he, he kind of uh, dials it down. You know, he's not, he doesn't have the gravitas that he tend to have when he's writing. He sounds very bold. So we're going to challenge Paul. And so with this kind of pushback against Paul, his assignment, his focus is not on the people and their opinions and perspectives. His focus is on the gospel and getting the gospel out to those that are lost and even those who are what I call saved lost. I know that's an oxymoron, but I'm going to do a series on that. First one, Paul writes, by the humility and gentleness of Christ, I appeal to you. He says, I, Paul, who am timid when faced to face with you, but bold toward you when I'm away. Paul's like, I heard what you said about me. <laughs> Verse 2, he said, I beg you that when I come, I may not have to be as bold as I expect to be towards some people who think that they live by the standards of this world. He's talking to religious folk. He's talking to religious folk, folk who should know better, who has allowed the standards of the world to dictate their religious behaviors. Are you following me? Trying to use, use earthly standards but somehow codify their religious behaviors. Verse 3, for though we live 
in the world, Paul cites, we do not wage war as the world does. See, the weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Verse 5, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive, strong word there, we take hostage every thought to make it obedient to Christ. In verse 6, and we will, we will be ready to punish, another strong word, every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. In other words, you can't correct or try to discipline folk if you're undisciplined and you can't receive correction. Amen? He's talking to a group of apostles and people who want to challenge his authority and his position based on their earthly perspectives, based on what they think Paul should be. Now, Paul could have come ready to fight, although he knew what was being said about him. Paul knew how they were hating on him. Paul was aware of the of the, uh, the 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 situations around him, but Paul also knew something. Paul remembered what he wrote back in uh, Ephesians chapter six. He recognizes and remembers that you know what this battle ain't about flesh and blood. So I, I didn't come here to fight and debate with y'all about what God has called me to do. Amen. I don't need to reaffirm. I don't need to confirm what God has placed in my heart and my assignment to satisfy you. That's what he was saying, in effect, to his, his audience. But there's one thing Paul said, man, I've come with the boldness of Christ. I paraphrase in the scripture. I've come with the boldness of Christ. I've come not to be bold in front of you or not to be considered bold in your absence, but I come in such a way that my anger my disposition is not like the way you fight. I didn't come to argue and debate with you theologies, political situations and concepts. I come to declare the word of God. I come to preach the scriptures. I come to live out and demonstrate what God has called me to do. He says, and now I recognize, again, stay with me. I'm reading in exegetically the scriptures was not there without taking it out of context. So in effect, Paul is saying this is a war that's being waged. So in other words, I'm not going to fight you on the basis of carnal battles. In fact, I'm not going to fight you at all. I'm going to fight the spirit realm. I'm going to fight where the war really is. Because if I win that war, I don't have to worry about this war. Amen? If you learn to win your battles in the spirit, you don't have to worry about fighting folk in the natural. Come on, somebody. Give God, that was a good place to shout right there. We get stuck sometimes trying to fight and please. And God said, no, get on your knees. That's where the war is. Fight your battles on your knees. There's a different place of warfare. And the point that I want to drive home today, the main point that I want to drive home today, again, is that you and I are in a spiritual cosmic battle. You are in a battle. You have been drafted. If you're a part of the kingdom, if you're a blood-bought, born-again believer, you have been drafted, whether you want to fight or not. Amen? You better learn how to fight. And not only learn how to fight, learn how to know, learn the weapons that you're supposed to fight with and know the enemy that you're supposed to be fighting. Y'all still with me? We waste too much time in the body of Christ. Thank you, May. That's where I'm going, fighting each other. Paul says, I'm not here to fight with y'all about what God called me to do. But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not worldly. They're not limited to this terra firma, this three-dimensional world that we're in. Our weapons are in the spirit realm. I heard Kenneth Copeland say this. 
during the time we were going through this whole thing and all these battles started coming. And God said, I want to change your perspective. And I just, you know, we were flipping the channel and just happened to be on that channel. I just happened to hear this statement of what he was saying. And I thought it was one of the most profound things that I ever heard, but yet it was simple. He said, Christian failure is prayer failure. Y'all still with me? Christian failure is prayer failure. Jesus said, my house, my father's house, or my house, same house, will be a house of prayer. Saints, the greatest weapon that you and I have today, hear me, is the weapon of prayer. Paul understood something. The weapon of prayer is the greatest weapon that you and I possess. See, prayer invokes faith. Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. And everyone that cometh unto him must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who, guess what, diligently seek him. So when there's something happening to you and me in the natural, your answer is in the supernatural. Are y'all still with me? Amen? Amen. My lips chat. Okay, they felt like it. Work with me. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to come back. I want to incite a fight in you today to get you and me to become insatiably hungry about prayer. This is where the body of Christ needs to be right now, in a place of prayer. I got one. Thank you, baby. For those that's watching, my wife gave me some chapstick. I can feel it. Pardon the informalities. Amen. Hold that. I'm going to do what I got to do to get this word to you. Amen. If I got to be cute doing it, come on, somebody. If y'all know how I was feeling before I got here this morning, didn't want to get out of my bed. Amen. But I didn't come because of how I was feeling. I came because of how God was feeling. How you feel this morning? God says, I'm good. So since I'm good, you good. Go do what I told you to do. So I'm good. Amen. Prayer, prayer invokes faith. And faith is another tool that God gives or a weapon that God gives to you and me to make things happen in the natural. He brings things out of the spirit realm to connect with the earth realm to bring about the solution that we need here. Are you following me? And so while we're distracted... While we're dealing with a, a series of interruptions in our lives, whether it be through haters, whether it be through opposition, whether it be through, and I want to keep this positive, whether it be whatever the pushback is, whatever that is, anything that pushes back against God, amen, is pushing back against you. Scripture is clear. To he that will be a friend of the world, there's no middle ground here. There's no hiatus between what I'm about to say. He that will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. There is no hiatus. There is no purgatory. Amen? And so anything that's counter to God is counter to you and me. And God is saying, challenge my people to wake up, open their eyes, and begin to pray. And when they don't know what to pray, begin to pray in the Spirit. And how do you pray in the spirit? You got to have the spirit. Come on, somebody. I've said it before. You can't be spirit-led if you are not spirit-fed. What we need in this hour, what we need in this, in this season, and we've always needed this, but even the more so, saints, and that is the power of the Holy Spirit fully at work with us. When we're operating in a kingdom fashion and the Holy Spirit is operating in us, then we can break down walls of division. 
We can break down walls of denomination. We can break down walls of racism. We can deal with injustices correctly. Amen? We can deal with these things. Because these are spiritual matters that we're trying to handle in earthly ways. Are you following me? So God is saying prayer. When I got that news about my dad, my heart sank. My wife could tell because he was doing fine. And all of a sudden, because of the medication he was taking and the way he was taking it, just all of a sudden just damaged his kidneys and heart. Doctors was trying to figure out what happened. You, I mean, great, doing fine, and bam, you're in the ICU. And I'm like, okay, wait a minute. You know, I know we all got to get out of here. I get that. I get that. But right now, God, I come against death in the name of Jesus. Because you gave me a promise. And I'm going to hold to that promise by faith and by prayer. And then when all of the other bad news started to come, I just began to speak to those things. As the information came, when the enemy comes in like a flood, guess what God wants to raise up? You to be the standard against him. Amen? You are the standard God raises up against the enemy. Let him come. Let him come. Just as information comes to you, you deal with the information. When you get bad news, give it good news. Come on, somebody. That's a good place to shout. Give your faith a job. Sometimes our faith is in an unemployment line because it's waiting for something to do. Your faith is sitting on the corner saying, oh, we'll work. Give me something to do. God is saying, you don't have to wait for a crisis situation to pray and to trust me. Sometimes we need to cast seeds out ahead of time. I'm not waiting for something to go wrong. I'm walking by faith. So whatever happens, amen, I can stand firm. I can stand strong in it. You're, you're, you're the main weapon, I won't be long today. Next week I'm bringing it. Your main weapon, the main weapon of success in your Christian experience is the weapon of prayer. The reason why prayer is so challenging and difficult, you ever tried to pray and you get sleepy? Come on, somebody. I know that. I, I know that. Now, I can't qualify this in Scripture, but I mean there's a sleep demon that's assigned to prayer. Amen. I'm not, I say that parenthetically, not theologically. I can't qualify it in Scripture, so I can't say that's what the Bible says. You try to pray, all of a sudden, you, you, all the other time, you taking, uh, what do you call those things? That, yeah, melat melatonin. I know somebody said, no, I take melanin. No, you already black. I'm not asking you that. <clears throat> work with me. Work with me. Amen. This is just off the cuff. I'm just saying as I hear it today. But they're having a hard time sleeping. Taking all this stuff. Pick up the word of God. <laughs> Amen. Man, I'm going to start praying more. I'm going to start praying more. And we always think, I'm getting ready to close. We always think, listen, listen, hear, hear what I'm about to say. I'm going to start praying more. Do me a favor when you say that. Just take the word more off and say it. I'm just going to start praying. Why more? Start praying. You start praying. 30 seconds. Lord, show me who I can show Christ to today. You pray. And by the way, be glorified in my life. You prayed. 15 seconds. And you're thinking, oh, man, I didn't pray for an hour. I didn't pray for, no, no, no. Stop focusing on the more. 
Because when you look at the more, you're trying to measure your ability. See, we get lost in our ability to do things. God is not looking for your ability. He's looking for your availability. So when you show up, he shows up. Amen? So we do it by faith. So as information comes to you, whatever it is, give it good news. Bad news come, give it good news. The word of God says I'm more than a conqueror. I'm anointed. I walk in the authority of God. I shall decree a thing and it shall be established. And God will cause his face to shine upon it. Amen? And when God's face shine on something, guess what that means? You have God's favor on it. Saints, I live in favor on purpose. You and I should live in favor on purpose. Give God a hand to praise. I'm going to close. <clears throat> live in favor. Amen. What happened? The musician went to sleep. Oh, no. It's, I'm, just, I'm just playing. Amen. Just a thrust of what I'm trying to say, saints. The only thing we can hold on to in this world that's solid, certain, and sure is Jesus. And if we're going to lean on man, make sure man is leaning on God. Don't lean on me unless I'm leaning on God. That's what Paul said to Timothy. He wasn't saying, follow me like everywhere I go. You just, you know, that's not what he meant by that. Follow me. Lean on what's in me. Come on, somebody. Lean on what's in me as I'm leaning on what's in me. Lean on a Christ in me because I'm leaning on a Christ in me. Because when you start leaning on my ability or some oratorial or whatever that word is, skills, oratory, amen, yeah, that one. Don't lean on my ability to do anything. Lean on what I'm leaning on. Paul says, I'm holding strong to this ladder because it's anchored. And just like my friend was able to save me because he was holding on to something solid, we need people that can recognize when we're drowning. And we need those people that recognize it, that they're holding on to something solid. Because what happens is if they're not holding on to something solid, they will drown you. Amen? Excuse me. You coming up for air and they pushing you down. Can't you see I'm dying on the inside? Well, if you're going to die, you got to die the way I want you to die. Hey Amen. I'm meddling now. It's time to quit. Develop a fight in you. Where we're not fighting flesh and blood. As Paul juxtaposes these two passages of Scripture from Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 and 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 through 6, he's letting us know that there is a very real war. And the battle that we're fighting is spiritual. Things are happening. Laws are changing. We got to pay attention to what we're paying attention to. And we got to pray. Lord, let the, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Remember our key word, our theme, thematic word for this year is the word connections. Lord, let me be a connection between heaven and earth for my brothers and sisters. For others, especially the lost, help me to connect them 
with heaven. Those that don't know Jesus and the part of their sin. As we got up this morning, my final closing, we did what we call like one last look. We sat out on the balcony of our nice room. Thank you, Jesus. We sat out on the balcony. Just one last look, last 15 minutes, looking out at the beautiful sky, the water, the ocean. And what dawned on me is I'm praying and I'm just thanking God for his beautiful creation and waking me up this morning and what direction he wants to go today. I see people walking around. People early on their jet skis having a good time. Not thinking about church. They're on vacation or whatever. Some live in the area. Out boating, nice boats. And that's the high rent district, so some money over there. One dude pulled up in a Rolls Royce, saw a Bentley. I walk up to him. I'm just kidding. What I'm about to say is not true. So how much you want for that? <laughs> Folk living large don't have a care in this world. They have a lot of stuff. People have a lot of things, a lot of friends, but don't have Jesus. And our assignment as believers is to point people to Jesus. So my challenge to you today was simple. Prayer is your most powerful weapon and when you pray, prayer invokes faith. When you believe that what you prayed, leave it at the altar. And know without a doubt that God is going to answer your prayer. I was telling my wife the other day, I said, a lot of people, they don't pray because God don't move fast enough. Listen. If you understood prayer, you realize that God moves faster than you think. Because the moment you prayed in faith, in a split second, God moved. It just hadn't been manifested. So while you're waiting for the manifestation, you got to know that what you prayed is going to come to pass. Well, pastor, what if it don't happen? Guess what? What if it does happen? Amen? I don't have time for doubt. I decided if I'm going to believe him, then I'm going to believe him. If I'm not going to believe him, don't even waste God's time. That's my opinion. When I pray, I'm believing it. I'm challenging you. When you pray, believe it. Leave it there. And know that God has moved instantly. I feel like another sermon coming on. Remember Daniel? Daniel prayed. Daniel didn't go back and ask God, Lord, it's been 21 days. What's going on? He didn't contact the post office of heaven and say, you know what? It's been 21 days. I got my prayer confirmation number that said that my packet should have been delivered already. He didn't complain. He believed, even though he didn't see it. But God sees what's happening. Sometimes between your prayer and your answer could be your faith. Because you prayed it, do you believe that you're going to receive it? Amen? Pray. Believe. There are some miracles that's waiting for a job. There are some things that God is desiring to do in your life today. He just wants you to believe it. Amen. Give God praise. I'm really closing. <clears throat> Amen. Friend, you're watching us today. 
either from Facebook Live or YouTube. Yeah, my voice sounds a little differently, but the Word of God is always potent. My challenge to you today is that the words you hear, Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And our assignment here is to deposit God's Word. And so as you're watching us and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want to challenge you today because our entire purpose for church is not to have church, but our entire purpose for church is that we would bring you to this very place, to the place of decision, the place of eternity, where we get to connect you with heaven right here on earth. Your sins can be forgiven. Every sin you've ever committed can be forgiven and washed away today. And it's simple. I've said it before. Jesus did all the dying so that you and I could do all the living. The Bible says that Jesus died on Calvary's cross some 2,000 years ago so that you and I might be saved. And three days after his death, Jesus himself rose from the dead. Death couldn't keep him down. And as a result of that, our salvation is sealed. All authority has been given unto Jesus. And as a result of that, you and I, just by accepting what he did as payment for our sins, we can have total forgiveness and eternal life. Amen? You can have peace with God today. Not perfection, peace. And so I want to invite you, those that are watching, even those that are in the room, to pray with me. This simple prayer is done through prayer. See how powerful prayer is? It's done through prayer. And let's pray this prayer quickly. Say, Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die for my sins, not his sins, but mine. I confess my sins. I admit I've been a sinner all my life. And today I'm asking you, forgive me. I receive what you did on Calvary. And I thank you for rising up from the grave and giving me eternal life. Today, I'm saved. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Lord means you're in charge. And Savior is what you did for me. So today, thank you for dying for me and for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Give God a hand of praise. We believe every week as God enables us to get this broadcast out, we are increasingly opening the door to uh, Nigeria. We're getting a whole lot of uh, folk joining our page. Uh, I screen them just to make sure they're not, you know, uh, venomous. And uh, so they have to be vetted before they can join our page. And there's a church in Nigeria, a very large church. I think they boast over 100,000 members. And the name of that church is um, Living Faith Nigeria. Living Faith Church. <clears throat> and a lot of them was coming to our page because they thought we were affiliated. So I had to put a disclaimer out there. And, um, but at the same time, many of them uh, have <clears throat> acknowledged that we're not, some are affiliated, some aren't. But they just want to be a part of what, <clears throat> what's happening here in America through this vehicle. I'm grateful for the church uh, there's a ministry, I say it by faith, that I pray that as God works out those connections, we'll adopt. And that's a church that's in Hyderabad, India, with Pastor Venkatram, Naik. Uh, him and his tribe watch our service every Sunday. In fact, he's watching now and he'll be posting, letting us know he's here. And he shares our message with his tribe. And they're doing an amazing work there in Hyderabad, India. And they're baptizing Hindus. Hindus are coming to Christ. People that are Hindus 
are watching this gospel, hearing this word coming from this church. Amen? And he's utilizing his vehicle. And there's others that I've gotten word from in the country. What does that mean? I don't say that to be bombastic. I don't say that to say, oh, wow. I'm saying that God will use anything, amen, to get his word out. You just be faithful. I said it before, never measure success by size. If you value a thing, if a thing's value is predicated on its size, then a diamond is useless. Be a diamond. Amen? Be a diamond. And so we thank God for that opportunity. Let's give God another hand of praise. Amen? <laughs> Quickly, as always, uh, you're probably asking, now what? What happens? I just gave my life to the Lord. I made a decision. What happens next? I'm glad you asked. And you're going to see this on the screen as well. We have two booklets that we would love to send to you free of charge. That's titled, Now What? It answers the questions about what it means to be a Christian, what it means to go to church, some very fundamental things. And we want to get this booklet into your hand immediately. All you have to do is reach out to us. There are three ways, four ways actually, that you can contact us. But reach out to us and let us know that you're interested in this material and we will get that to you anywhere in the world free of charge. And if you need or desire someone to come alongside of you to assist you in your spiritual growth and edification and enrichment, let us know that as well. We have many women here who are eager uh, to come alongside of you and assist you in that immediate discipleship process. Amen? And also, we have a youth edition of the same thing. So if you're a young person and you're watching and you made a decision to make Jesus the Lord of your life, firstly, we're going to ask that you get your parents' permission because you're still a child. And before we can send you this, we need to hear from your parents. Amen? So have your parents to reach out to us and if they're approved, we will get this information to you immediately, wherever you are in the world. Amen? Amen. Quickly, do we have any uh, more videos, David, our missionary videos? We're going to show one of our missionary videos. That'll give me a chance to uh, drink some water. <laughs> Amen? I'm going to come back and share where we are in our uh, budget and what God has in store for us. In India, a man knows the sun brings him light, so he will pray to the sun. At night, when the moon provides him light, he will pray to the moon. Light is important, spiritual. Anything that gives him light, he will pray to. But he will also pray to things of darkness. When the cobra strikes and kills his child, out of fear and ignorance, he will also pray to the cobra. He will even pray to demons and nameless spirits. India is full of gods. Our hope is for Indians to know the one true God, the light, Jesus Christ. The India Assemblies of God has 8,000 churches and we want to plant 25,000 more by 2020. Most will be planted among unreached peoples where the light is needed most. But to do this, we have asked Global University and Light for the Lost to help us train 30,000 church planters through India College of Ministry or ICOM, which has 36 courses that can be completed at home, online or in church study groups. The cost to train one church planter through ICOM? $100. Yes, anyone can help plant a new church and train the pastor for just $100. If an American church, American believer can spend just $100, it will bring a church through this training that we give. Light for the Lost provides funds to print the ICOM books used by nearly 20,000 believers in India right now. Bhavna uses ICOM to grow as a pastor. She has planted 15 house churches in a slum. 
icon books and the bible are her teaching materials these books help me grow in the lord and understand the bible now people who come to me can understand the bible with these books i am able to reach so many people krishna was a terrorist fighting in nepal before jesus saved him now icom gives him everything he needs to grow and become a pastor understanding comes from these books everything i know about jesus my salvation and the bible comes from these icom books because light for the lost and global university provide these important tools we believe we will reach our goals to train 30000 people uh, may seem impossible for an american mind but as an indian i would say it is possible but because this is a land of people 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 all over people everywhere people so with the help of uh, global university and icom and with the help of light for the lost discipling is happening so we can reach more than 30000 train more than 30000 by 2020 you can help bring light to the unreached peoples of india you can help plant new churches and train the pastors through icom we say thank you for bringing the light to our country thank you global university and the light for the lost amen amen well saints i want to thank you in advance for how you and I are partnering with Light for the Lost, which is um, the ministry arm of the men's ministries of the Assemblies of God, uh, who assist missionaries, world missions, amen, and um, reaching various people groups. In fact, you've seen several videos, and uh, our challenge this year is to raise only $5,000. And uh, I want to submit to you that we are more than halfway there. And we just started this about maybe, what, two and a half, three months ago? So give yourselves a hand. We're close to $3,000, amen, already for the year. And as you just heard, uh, a small amount of money can do a lot of things in other places in the world. Um, and so we've set up on our website, on our church app, if you have the church app, in fact, we're getting ready to do an upgrade to the church app. It's going to be really cool. Or you can give uh, tangibly here in person, just filling out an offering envelope. And if you desire an offering envelope uh, at, during the time that we give, just raise your hand and I'll just get one to you. Uh, what we're asking you to do, if God impresses upon your heart, whatever you give, from a dollar to a thousand, whatever. Um, just If you're writing a check, just put in the memo section missions and that way 100% of those funds goes to light for the lost and uh, I've asked that those funds are equally dispersed to all the countries that we're going to send to we're sending money to Africa to raise up churches and pastors and get these pastors trained we're sending money to Cuba we're sending money to India we're also sending money to Iran and I think one of the other videos was, uh, it was somewhere in Asia, I forget the country. Um, in fact, we're going to have a missionary here pretty soon that's coming from a specific place. I can't say where, and we can't broadcast it. It's just that sensitive issue. They will come and share with us what's happening and how we're supporting that effort. So when you're giving to Living Faith, we are so grateful for your generosity and more importantly your obedience to the word of God you see we don't give tithe you return the tithe the tithe is the Lord according to Leviticus it belongs to God so you're not giving God what belongs to him you're returning what belongs to him over and above that in our offerings that's when we give out of what God has entrusted us to give which the truth be told all of it belongs to him amen and so uh, if you're on a church app, there's a place designated called Missions. And on our website, 
uh, you can go to the website and find that as well. And so we're going to raise that. I believe we will exceed that amount. That's just what we do. We'll, we'll exceed that amount, and we're going to be a blessing. This is the year that we're going to continue this. God has blessed us. This church is blessed, and we want to be a blessing. You've heard me say this before. The key indicator that you are blessed is that you are able to be a blessing. That's when you know you're blessed. And so what we want to do, again, during our time of offering, I uh, just want to remind you as to where we are and what we're doing uh, by way of missions. And not to mention, we're still supporting our regular missionaries. We give, we're supporting over 35 missionaries around the world. This is separate from that. And so we give over $20,000 a year to missions so that the gospel is planned. I want to do more. I want to do more. And so let's give. Let this be a year of giving. Are you still with me? Let it be a year of giving. And so at this time, I just want to uh, let us know again, for those of you that are watching by way of live stream, and those of you that are here, if you desire to give, be a part of what God is doing here in our mission endeavor, um, you can connect with us that way. And as always, there's four ways to give uh, here in Living Faith. And uh, we want to thank you for your generosity and your giving um, to these efforts and continuing to help us to be a blessing to others. We have a major outreach coming up pretty soon. Uh, our back to school. School is ending or has it ended already? I guess it depends on what school you're talking about, right? Next week. Okay. So we want to be a blessing. We want to start preparing ourselves for the kids returning. And, um, and so we have another opportunity this year to be another blessing to this community. And so we're going to make sure that nobody in this community has a need, a school need. Amen. And that's what God is calling us to do as a ministry. We're going to bless people. We're going to meet needs. We're going to find them and meet them as the Lord leads us. That makes sense? Amen. Can't meet every need, but when God says, go here, we'll do that. Also, um, I mean, there's all the announcements that I have at the moment. Again, thank you guys. Uh, again, last week was phenomenal. The men, almost forgot about this, men, brothers, the men prepared the breakfast last Sunday. Oh, man, yeah, I can tell who wasn't here. Because if you were here, you'd have been like, you'd have been, you'd have been clapping all kind of ways. Those brothers cook, man, I got to find another event for us to have just so y'all can cook breakfast. The men provided the breakfast. Daryl, he was on the eggs committee. I didn't know he was a short order chef. Right, Matisse? Our compliments to the chef. You want a microphone? Yeah, amen, hallelujah. Okay. We got to let these people go, though. We got to let, let them go. go. So I just want to say, so ladies, we, we've got to. You know, I'm not about competition, so. <laughs> I don't try to compete. But ladies, we'll have to get together so we can cook a fine breakfast for the men. I'm, I'm really not good with the eggs and the grips. So let's come together. We'll figure it out. We might have to borrow some of the men to cook for us. But we'll come together. We'll provide breakfast for the men too. Amen. 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 And we have an opportunity for you guys on Father's Day. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. On yeah. Father's Day. Right. We'll so get ready, get ready, get ready. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. You good? Yes, All right. Thank you. Amen. Let's give it up for our men. At this time, we're going to just bring our service to a close. Again, thank you all for being here today and those that are watching. Continue to pray. Continue to trust God and set yourselves up for miracles. God's waiting to bless you. He is waiting to bless you. He's waiting to show himself strong in your life. Amen.
And as, before we close, if you're a guest here today, um, we don't consider you a visitor. You're a first-time guest. Perhaps you haven't been here in a while. If you would raise your hand, even if you're watching uh, live, let us know. Just type something in. Hey, it's my first time watching. Let us know that we want to acknowledge you and we want to be a blessing to you as well. Any first-time guests in the house today? Amen. Amen. Well, we always want to provide that opportunity. And you, 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 Living Faith, you have an opportunity to create first-time guests. We have invite cards, invite people. Amen. The money that we spend on billboards, more people attend church services, not through marketing strategies, word of mouth and personal invitation. 85% will come if you invite them. Amen? Because I wanted to get a billboard. We, we, have, a bill, we have a spot to, to have a, you know, a billboard up there. I said, you know what? Let me take that money and put it somewhere else and just ask the church to invite people. Amen? Can we do that? Amen. Uh, without any further ado, we're going to close and uh, we'll exit rear rows first immediately after the video. Amen. Well, God bless you. And uh, we will see you on Wednesday night. Wednesday is going to be different. I won't be here. I don't have to be here because we got some qualified people that will be here handling things on Wednesday. Amen. I don't, I don't even have to look back. So we'll be at district council uh, next week, my wife and me, uh, just making sure everything is going well in our fellowship. And, uh, and so... Um, and God has blessed your pastor to be a part of the presbytery. So um, I have a little bit more clout now. Amen. I got a seat at the table, y'all. Amen. And you know what? I'm talking too. <laughs> and let me say this. And because of that, they're looking for more African-American men and women to come to the table. Amen. I'm not in, I'm not in their face. I'm just representing so they can see we can do this. We always can do it. Amen. And not just African Americans, but some of our brown brothers and sisters. Amen. Latinos, Latinas. Did I say that right? <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right, let me sit down. That way we know we're really leaving, right? Amen. God bless you. We love you. And we thank you that we get to do this. Hey, guys, we're so excited that you were just blessed by today's message. We trust and pray that you received the word just for you today. And guess what? We want to hear all about it. Like it. Comment below. Follow us on all of our social medias. We want to hear from you. Amen. And remember... You can partner with us on our website at lflive.org if you wish to give and uh, be a part of what God is doing in this ministry that's blessing you and so many around the world. I want to pray until we see each other again next week. Let's bow our heads and look to the Lord. Father God, we are so grateful today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the metaphor blessings of your grace. Thank you, Lord God, that we're not just hearers of your word, but we are faithful doers. And so, Father, today, bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, God bless. God bless you.